All right, well, we're back at it. Here is our 50B. In case you haven't seen this before on YouTube channel, we have a playlist now. Eventually, I got myself sat down and put a playlist together. So we have a playlist on this digger from day one when we picked it up last year. So you can go and check that out to get updated on everything that would happened. But it is a digger at the end of the day, and one of the main things you want to do with a digger is dig. And that's the thing it can't do at the minute because this arm here, as you see the way it sits to one side here badly, you can see this bottom pin here. It's completely sheared off and this here is prized outwards. So we only have a pin holding it, kind of half holding it on one side. And see the way someone did heat it beforehand to try and bend it back in. You can see here where the brackets up here are all welded as well on both sides and they're cracked across the wells so the wells didn't hold. So today we're going to tackle this mammoth of a job and take this back arm off the back of this digger. So the first thing I need to do is get this yoke started up, get it turned around, get this bucket taken off and that bucket put on. Alright, so we're just trying to get the bucket on here. The ground I'm working on is fairly on level and I have a feeling that's why it's not fully gone in. You see there, there's not much wiggle room, there's none at all. This bucket came with the digger, but I don't know if it's for this digger. It was laying over in a kind of a, a grew in place on its own. They had two of these diggers, so maybe it was for the other one. You can also see there was a lot of welding done here and it might have been widened. I may have to grind off a bit, but it'll not be very much to get that bucket on. But we really do need to get it on. Alright, so I probably could have forced it on and got it on, but you know what, then I'd have the hassle trying to get it off. So the reason we put on this wider bucket was to use it as a foot um, to keep this thing stable because we are taking this back arm off this digger. So having a wide footprint versus this little thing here, it will make a massive difference. So that'll secure that end of that there. There's no way that can flip over. Um, so all we have to do now is secure it on this end and we're going to put stuff underneath it to keep it up with the ground. I have looked at a lot of stuff online and I've seen nothing. Nobody actually taking it off, not taking it off in an easy way to understand. There's one channel Swedish hillbilly. He has one very same as this. He did it without taking any of this off and to be honest he bent a couple of the bolts that was there and stuff and I wasn't that keen on doing it the way he did it. Um, I think this all has to come off in one piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is jack it up and secure it. This is what I've came up with. I'm wearing a mic now. It's got very very windy but now that this is retched out I was able to put pallets underneath this. Now the way I've put the pallets it's not going to crush down because I put planks underneath that and built them up like a stairway underneath us so that everything is supported across the entire span of the pallet. So that's strong. That's a lot stronger than you might imagine. Use the ratchet strap to go right around underneath. 
and pull the thing down to it. It probably doesn't need it, but it's an extra bit of footing to it. I almost thought about welding on two brackets on both sides and putting legs on this here. And not using any of this, just putting legs that you could adjust up and down on a bit of box iron. But then the other part of me said, why am I making work for myself? <laughs> Just do it this way and stop complicating things. So that's the way we went. These timbers aren't just sitting there They're also screwed down every one of them. You'll see that our legs are extended down Now some people might say you should have did that because now you can't try forward and take your boom off the back Well, I thought about that and I put a lot of thought into that now If you look at these tires anytime I go to put any weight on this this machine will sit very badly to the left hand side because of that bubbled tire there you see with the big arch up on the top of it. So I just said to myself I want to get it as level as I can so I put a spirit level on the back of the machine across here. Adjusted these that we got the machine level. With that like that I tied everything down and my hope is that when I take off this ram, knock out this bottom pin, disconnect these pipes and put blank caps on, I can then drop these and that way I won't need a bottle jack. I can use these here as the jack and just keep this fixed in the one place. Does that make sense? Well let's give it a go anyway. a pin completely sheared off oh, there we go. it's inevitable we're gonna leak oil there's nothing I can do about that one so I've got the wrong brand caps that's a bummer because if it's closed now till Monday so I'm gonna have to go and look and see can I get a set of brand caps but that stalls us now from going any further all of something I went around and I've searched to find a blank cap for this and I had no joy. It's an awkward old size. But what I did get was one of these. So these are just a simple pipe connection. The pipe would come in here and the machine would crush this down around the pipe. Just like these guys here. That's what really what you're looking at there. So the guy told me to crush this end in here and put a stripper weld across it. And that should get you out of that problem. Save you having to root around looking for blank caps. So I just crushed in the end of that. Now we'll stick a bit of weld on it. Alright, so that's that done and here's four I met earlier, ready to rock. Screw on there. So I'm just going to mark these as I go along. Now it's not that I'd forget, this is purely for your benefit. <coughs> Alright, so a while on, but I'm having to take several breaks here because every five minutes the heavens seem to open. Today was supposed to be a really good day. Plenty of sunshine and good warm temperatures. Said so the sun would be beaming out of the sky. I don't know, they made to go back to school and learn how to predict the weather. These are happy anyway. Put this piece of an old handle across to keep the ram up in the air. Um, that'll protect it and not damage the chrome on it. But now everything is disconnected, the pin is gone. Technically, I can't see any reason why she shouldn't come apart now. Well, lo and behold, we have separation. Well, I'm just having a look here and I can see that we still have, however loose, we still have a sleeve in there, which is good news. We can see the true extent now of the damage that was done to the bottom of this. So you can see the way it was bent out. There's not a mission of straightening that. You can put all the heat you want onto it. And if you did, it'd never be as strong as what it was. You can see here where someone welded it to. So it must have cracked when it was pushed out. So that's the first phase done. Next thing is to tackle this. So just connect this oil on the top first. I wonder if I got a wrench. Bit that. Yeah, it looks a bit more professional. Uh, hopefully there's no pressure on this. There's a bit, there's a wee bit of oil coming. 
I'm going to take this off and stick a blank cap on it. Hopefully this fits. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. I bought the wrong ones again. Good man, Adrian. I'm starting to rain here as well, so we're just going to have to pause a minute. All right, so we just had a 30 minute downpour there. I'm hoping now that it might ease. Still rain a bit. So one thing I have noticed here, look at the restriction on that. Is that supposed to be like that? Maybe it's just to pressurise it. But jeez, there's not much oil running through it when you see the way that's restricted. Right, so the next thing we need to do is remove these guys here on the bottom of this slew motor. There's one awkward one in at the back, but the rest of them should be quite easy. There's easy enough to get at. Probably shouldn't say that, but sure, let's tear into it anyway. Tight. That's just sheared off like a knife through butter. So it's around a few places seeking to get a socket set. I was just going to go and buy a decent um, Allen key socket head um, for this. But I may not have to do that because one of the lads mentioned to me, just in a local car shop actually, just put a bolt up on it and use that. And that's a bolt there fits. And look at it's worth a try. I have a feeling it'll shear, but I'm going to weld a nut onto the end of this here. I'm going to stick a ratchet onto it and I'm going to try it before I go looking to buy a socket set because that would mean I'm away for the most of the day and I'll not get it done the day. I just welded a nut on the end of that bolt so the bolt will fit up in here. It's lovely and snug. I do not think this is going to work. Ah, just sheared straight off. Yeah. I was thinking that. I'm going to have to do a run here which would probably be take me most of the day and get a socket set because there's no way around that. So it's the following day and I'm back at it now. And I went off yesterday evening. It took a while, had to go around a few places, but I've managed to find a set of these hex uh, socket sets, uh, half inch. This hopefully will solve our problem. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna have to get more heavy handed. I'm gonna add some heat to it, because heat always seems to help. Um, I was looking through a workshop manual and there isn't really any problem with seals here that I'm gonna cause any issues. So I'm just gonna heat them up. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I can't bait the bit of heat. And the right tools, I suppose. Jeez. Oh. All right, well, that one's loose. All right, so that is all of them loosened. I don't want to loosen them out any further just yet, because I want to take this guy here off. We're sucking days and now this top hat will come off. Right, so I'm going to use these two studs here to fix something to this. So we can lift this guy straight up. This is one, just an old door handle, I think it was one of those spring loaded door handles. And that'll sit lovely in there and I'll make another one for this side. We'll probably bore out these holes, but that will at least lift it straight. That's definitely blunt. All right, so these are our two brackets made. Bolts out now and just throw them on. Alright, so I just had to stop there and had a wee quick read of the manual. 
and tells you in the manual to mark this the whole way down with a scriber if it makes assembly easier or whatever at least people can see the way it comes apart now you can see we have a wee bit of division starting to come here so i lifted it again i went through the manual and by the way john from county kilkenny sent me this john power is his name from kilkenny and i have to say it's been powerful help to me um he's just one of the viewers had one for his brother and he printed another one just especially for me but look at the way he put it into a hard folder and everything for me now, i did have a digital copy but i kind of just stuck to looking at it on the computer because look at the many pages you'd have to print this guy printed everything and that there is so helpful and i'm using it so many times so massive thank you to john for that loosen them six bolts is all you need to do is take this off it just sometimes it can be quite tight put a little bit of pressure on it and i started tipping it with this rubber mallet here and slowly but surely it started to come apart now that we have it moving it should lift off a wee bit of pressure there on the tip she's tight she's definitely tight she is going it's very slowly but she's definitely moving all right so you seen it and i didn't because there was a way off to get a bit of a crowbar put on the knee and give it a little bit of a prize but then decided it wanted to come out. There is it. Our slew motor is lifted out. Oh, I see problems. I see problems. There's a tooth broken. One of the splines broken straight off. The rest of them, funny enough, don't look too bad. I don't know if that's something they can fix or not. Yeah, that's 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 a shame now. We look down here then. Mm, not too bad. Splains here are actually okay. I'm just looking to see is any of them broken. And I don't see any of them broken. Lo and behold, there is our piece. Yeah, there it is. There's the piece that's broken off. I'm dropping this over to Connors. They asked me to drop it over when they were fixing the rams in the front of the loader. So I'm going to leave it with them and see what they think. Or maybe perhaps they might have another used one. Or I might be able to place another used one. We'll have to just see what they say. Anyway, I'm disappointed to see that. But look it. That's it. We just have to keep plowing on. Now the next thing is the start. Well, that actually turns very, very smoothly. An awful lot of play in it either. We have to rip this whole back end off here still. So it's a matter of loosening all these bolts just slightly. Um, I don't want to particularly lift this with the engine hoist because that might be pushing it weight wise. I'm going to put the forks of the tractor over it and I'm going to tie a chain around it here and try to lift it that way. Right, so I have to use the wrench. Even if it's not the right size, these things are all imperial. I don't have any of that imperial stuff here. So I just added a lifting strap to the front of it. The reason why is I want to balance it. I want it to lift kind of all at one level, if you get me. With the chain on its own, when it would pull out, it would probably flip over like this. That puts a wee bit of pressure on the bottom of it. It might make it hard for the bottom to come out, right? So I don't want that happening. So now I have a support on the front and on the back. So we should be able to lift it at kind of more level now. Finally, that's it. It's a bit seized on. There's a couple of sleeves on the other side there, which are kind of sitting on that upper bolt, which is merely like glue, so they were trying to release. But you see the way it came off now, and it sits. And I was fit to tilt this up, and it sits level. That's what I wanted. I didn't want it slapping forward. That's our last part off now. I'm just going to put that down on a pallet that I can lift it, move it around as I please, and work on it a bit easier. 
All right, so just stuck a mic on there because it's got very windy, hence the probably difference in the sound levels. But the task we set out to get done is now done. I have to say straight out the bat, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would have been. Apart from a few stupid things from me not having the right tools, and equally as important, nothing broke. So here's our piece here then anyway that we took off. This piece here, more or less everything's going to have to be replaced on it. Um, the top bracket has to completely be taken off because of all the wells and cracks on it, so it's on safe, so it'll be completely going. And here is our replacement piece here, but no cracks in it. So that'll be going on straight on when that one comes off. And um, then this lower or middle section here will all be getting replaced by this one here. If you look at this splines here, you can see how kind of almost pointy they are on this. The further you go down, the flatter they are, but you can see the upper side here is very pointy. So that's just simply wear, but if you look at the other one, it doesn't have that. The other one's just lovely and square the whole way down. We will have to put a bearing in it, probably. Although it is torn lovely and freely, we'll probably still have to stick a bearing in it. Might as well do that when we're at it. And if there's one on the top, which I presume there is, we'll do that too. And then we get to this galoot here. Um, yeah, I think replacement is probably going to be the easiest fix for this, because you can see that's broken. I don't think that can be replaced or repaired and I think this is all just part of the one unit. Although the splines themselves don't look that badly worn, that brick there is just killing it. One other thing I would like to do, see can we get these two rams here working. I don't know what's wrong with them, we're not getting any feed to them although it's plumbed in. But you can see the way the previous owner welded this onto it on both sides just to stop it from moving. So that lays it as locked in the one place. I'd love to be able to move it back and forth because it should have slid on that rail. These two rams will expand, lock it in place. So it either wasn't locking or the rams themselves was leaking. But another issue I spotted was this crack here. Running a right bit along here. Again, that's just welding. We can fix all of that. But yeah, I would like to get that moving. Because if you're able to tuck it over to the side, at least the bucket would be in and not sticking out slightly from the side of the digger. I think that in itself would make it work doing that. So I have a set of tyres I got nearly a year ago sitting in the warehouse, so I think it's time to throw them on. So I told the lads to come on ahead with them probably next week. I'll park her up somewhere, let them just throw the tyres on to her and have that part done as well. And then we'll start building it up and hopefully it'll get better from then onwards. So just before I do leave, I want to give a quick mention to something that's definitely a worthy cause, and that is Farmer Phil, another YouTuber in Ireland, is running a tractor run to raise money for the Irish Cancer Society. It's happened on the 15th of September. I'll put a link in the description if any of you guys are in the area. I think there isn't many households, no matter where you go in the world, that hasn't been affected by that, our own included. I was talking to Philip on the phone and I said I'll help him out in any way that we can help him here. We'll certainly be making a donation. I don't think we're going to be fit to get there, unfortunately. Sunday's a day that's actually one of our busiest days or something that I have to do, which is family related every Sunday. And getting out of it doesn't be just that terrible easy. But if you have a free couple of hours and they're in the area, be sure to go and check that out. It's definitely something that's worth supporting. Thanks very much for watching. See you next one.